Welcome back in your regional headlines this evening. Barbados is set to fight NCDs through Chinese medicines. Here's more. China's ambassador to Barbados, Wanka, is asking for more Barbadians to learn Mandarin. With Chinese and Barbados develop the very strong relations. Uh, there, there is some uh, a enthusiasm, more enthusiasm of, chi of the Barbadian people to know more about, about China through learning Chinese. So I think that uh, the Confucian Institute in this campus plays a very critical role in, you know, uh, helping people learn Chinese to experience culture and then they will get their more interest, much more interest to engage with China. Venezuela's economy is in trouble with hyperinflation and a drop in oil prices leading to a scarcity of basic goods. Economic crisis is hitting the country's public hospitals the hardest. Al Jazeera's John Holman reports. Every day, Luna watches while the swelling on her son Tiago's brain increases. He urgently needs an operation, but the doctors can't do it. The operating theatre has been out of action for months. Impotence. I feel really helpless, especially this month when we have everything we need for the operation and the operating theatre isn't fit for use. It's out of our hands and we can't fix the air conditioning. We can't decontaminate the place and our boy is getting worse. Venezuela's public health system is disintegrating along with its economy. Doctors have smuggled us into this hospital in Merida to see conditions firsthand. The patients, the families, they have to buy everything because mm. here in the hospital we don't have them. So um, uh, most of the times uh, patients die because their patients, their families are out the hospital looking for the treatments. Emergency wards with broken monitors a cupboard full of defibrillators, none of which work. Basics like saline, antibiotics and gloves, non-existent. Doctors are forced to improvise, here using a bit of cardboard instead of a car. And the biggest problem of all, medicine. It's incredibly scarce and those without money simply go without treatment. There are patients here for three months or more with pneumonia, with illnesses picked up in the hospital, and how will they get better if they don't get antibiotics? Overworked and understaffed, they head from emergency to emergency. The mother's asked us not to film this, but just down the hallway there's a child having an epileptic fit. Uh, the, the nurses here, there's only two of them in a ward where there should be eight, and they don't have the medicine to actually control that, so there's nothing that they can do uh, while this is happening. Doctors later told us several epileptic patients had died in the last five months. Their own safety is also at risk. We have some inside the hospitals that they steal the light bulbs. That uh, darkness has been really facilitating for the thieves to rob us with uh, guns and with knives. Some medics have gone on hunger strike to protest the lack of pay, resources and even cleaning products. As a cockroach crawls up the wall of his surgery, I ask Orfram why he's staying. If we leave, they don't have uh, materials, they don't have treatments, and they're not going to have doctors. So some of us are trying to stay, are trying, but maybe if things continue like they are right now, um, most of us are going to have to leave. Luna and Tiago don't have that choice. The public health system is the only hope they have to hold on to. Plans are being advanced to establish a single domestic space within the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS. Top officials with the nine-member grouping will meet in Antigua and Barbuda from May 30th to June 2nd to develop a framework to facilitate this arrangement within the context of the OECS Economic Union. One in place, it would mandate that persons traveling within the Economic Union area be treated as if they would have already been cleared for entry and satisfied all required border control formalities for entry into the area. Area. Additionally, their visitors arriving from outside the space should satisfy all border control checks only at the first point of entry into the EUA and then be able to move freely within the area without subsequent border control checks. 
The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is forecasting an active Atlantic hurricane season. Set to officially begin on June 1st, weather in the Gulf region has already gotten a head start this year. For the upcoming season, NOAA expects 10 to 16 storms with upwards of 8 hurricanes. The higher category hurricanes may have winds that reach up to 111 miles per hour. A long-term season averages are 12 named storms with six hurricanes and three major ones. The 2015 season was slightly below average with 11 named storms. Weather in the Gulf region has gotten a head start this year. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration is forecasting an active Atlantic hurricane season set to officially begin on June 1st. For the upcoming season, NOAA expects 10 to 16 storms with upwards of 8 hurricanes. The higher category hurricanes may have winds that reach 111 miles per hour. Long-term season averages are 12 named storms with six hurricanes and three major ones. The 2015 season was slightly below average with 11 named storms. It is too costly to build a new prison in Guyana. Head of Public Security spoke about the March 3rd prison unrest at Camp Street Prison. Travis Chase reports. The Commission of Inquiry report into the deadly March 3 unrest at the Camp Street Prison, which claimed the lives of 17 inmates, is expected to be handed over to the President and the Minister of Public Security at the end of May 2016. But Public Security Minister Kemra Dramjatan has hinted what could possibly be part of the COI findings. The 17 deaths, in my opinion, and I'll state it here, occurred at the hands of the prisoners themselves. Clearly. But we will get the Commission of Inquiry, and that is why we made sure that an inquiry was held. Uh, immediately it was established, and we asked for one month to come out. They have gone on for about five more months. It is going to be finished at the end of this month, I, I, I think. So, uh, well, not five more months, about three or four more months. So it will be, the, the results of that will be there. Several inmates who took the stands have testified too that one of the reasons for the unrest was the deplorable conditions at the time at the Camp Street Prison. The public security minister is not shying away from that fact. He spoke of his visit to the Camp Street Prison. Yes, I went in there in October last year, inside of Capital A, to meet them because a lot of them know me because I, as you, you know, uh, uh, been their defense counsel for some of them and, and uh, been doing some pro bono work for a number of them that have been long time there bringing constitutional motions in relation to unduly long periods. And so when I became minister, they, a number of petitions. So I went in, opened the gate, and I went in. And they told me of the bad conditions. You could have seen it and smelt it and everything else. So we decided that, yes, we have to do some things better. Trouble is, it requires huge amount of capital. Ramjatan said that he held discussions with the ABC countries about the possibility of building a new prison, but... They do not build prisons. No part of their overseas uh, developmental works, they do build prisons. We have to build a prison from out of all revenues. And the prison for 150 to 200 prisoners, coming up almost $6 billion for Guyana. And it is very expensive, very, very expensive. Do we spend that money or do we go to Mazaroni, build some more buildings? We are going Mazaroni, building the buildings there. It will be far cheaper. Those were your regional headlines. Stay with us for your world news.